I see a ton of DocuSigners using checkboxes when they should be using radio buttons and vice versa. If you're not using the right field, the risk is that your envelopes will be incorrectly committed by your recipients and then you'll end up with errors and you're going to have to chase your signers. But when your forms are well designed, your envelopes should work perfectly from the get-go so the signing process is a quick and easy thing for your signers and also for yourself, the sender. So in today's video, we'll explore the difference between radio buttons and check box fields and which situation should you use one over the other. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Sofian Saudi, ex DocuSign staff and founder of Solution Consulting. We have companies that want to grow but have tons of paperwork, automate systems so they can serve more customers better and faster with fewer resources. If you're interested in our help to grow your business, you'll find the link in the description of this video to book a consultation with one of our automation consultants. And if you are beginning with DocuSign, I strongly suggest that you download our free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet because it will help you understand how to automate all your forms and your documents and all the links to the things that i mentioned in the video you can of course find them in the description just down below now let's talk about the difference between radio buttons and checkboxes using one or the other will depend on the information you're collecting from your signers so the first step is to get clarity on the information that you want to collect can the question be skipped or is it mandatory for signers to complete do you want signers to give you one or multiple answers? And if you're allowing multiple answers, do you need minimum, maximum, exact number or range of answers? Even though it might seem like it's an overkill to think about all of these questions, this is really what you have to go through when you're building your forms because this is the only way to guarantee the accuracy of the information that your signers will be providing you with. For example, here in this form, the first question prompts your signers to answer the question, do you have a spouse? And your signer should answer yes or no. Here, I prefer using a radio button because they are required by default and they only allow the recipient to select one option out of the two different options. So to use your radio button, it's super simple. Simply drag a radio field on the first option and don't forget to give a meaningful label to the group label. So we're going to go to group label and the group label should be, do you have a spouse? That could be something like this. And then make sure to give a value to all your radio buttons. So the first one is yes, second one is no. The way that you know clicking into this one as you can see my yes has a slightly darker blue around it and then if i select this one it's the other one only the group label should always represent the question and then the radio button values should represent the answer and i'll explain further in this video why this is super important just bear with me here what you don't want to do is to drag and drop a new radio button for your other option because that would mean that your buttons aren't part of the same group if they're not part of the same group the rule that says that only one option can be selected will not work because that rule works at the group level the step three really is to mind your groups so here we're going to delete this radio group since it's not part of the first group and then we're going to click on that first on that second radio button that was added automatically and then move this to our other option if there was another option the signer could choose for example i'm not sure then we would simply click on a little plus and then we would have our third option we wouldn't want to drag and drop a new radio button because it wouldn't be part of the same group and we could add as many buttons that we'd want in the group you could have technically a group of 15 buttons and your user would only your recipient would only be able to select one out of the group the way that you know that your radio buttons and checkboxes are part of the same group is by looking at the blue dashed outer line that tells you that they are part of the same group now the signer cannot select yes and no they have to choose also they cannot skip the question because radio buttons are required by default but if we used checkboxes instead, our recipient could select yes and no, which isn't what we'd want. So let's try. So if I create a group of checkboxes, I can select yes and I can select no. But if I do the same thing with my radio button, as soon as I select yes and try to select no, yes gets unselected. Also, since checkbox fields aren't required by default, the recipient could skip the question altogether and we'd end up with missing information. 
Now, if you've been using a DocuSign account with a Business Pro subscription for a while, you may have noticed that you can create rules, validation rules to add to your checkboxes so that the signer would be forced to provide you with one option and couldn't select both. But why would you want to do this in the first place when Reggie buttons have that default functionality? I don't see what's the point here. Actually, I'm wrong here. There's one advantage that I can think of. One advantage you get by recreating a radio button rule in a checkbox, you know, using the validations here. The one thing that is kind of annoying with radio buttons is that the fact that you cannot unselect an option after you've selected it. So for example, let's say that, you know, the do you have a spouse question was not required, meaning that you'd leave it up to your signers to decide whether they want to answer the question or not. If the signer selects yes, then they cannot unselect the answer. They have to select no instead. But maybe it's just they clicked yes by accident or they don't want to answer the question anymore because they're not sure about the status of their relationship. Maybe your signers are in a situation ship and they need to check with the person they've been dating for a while whether they should select yes or no. And yes, DocuSign can solve almost your problems, even, you know, getting clarity on your relationship status. But that's a topic for another day. Anyway, if we had a checkbox group instead here, then we would be able to unselect our initial selection after realizing that no, we're not in the ideal relationship that we thought we were. You can also set up all the validation rules with your checkbox groups that you can't do with your Reggie button. For example, here we're asking the signers to tell us how many days per week they go to the gym. With Reggie buttons, they won't be able to select more than one day unless you add new Reggie buttons that are part of new groups. But why would you want to do that? It would be a complete waste of time since this is the default functionality of checkboxes. So that's why you would want to use checkboxes in this example. But by using a checkbox group, the user will be able to select however many days they want. They're going to the gym. But if we were asking a different question, and that's why the question is what matters the most. If we were asking which four days the signers plan to go to the gym, then we'll use a checkbox group as well. But we use a validation rule that says that the signer has to select exact four days. So let me add a, another group of radio of checkboxes. And now that I've got my group selected, I can go to my validations tab and say that I want my signers to select exactly four options out of the group. And so the different validation options that you can choose are selecting at least, at most, or a range of options. What I really like about checkboxes is also that they allow the use of negative and positive statements to set up conditional logic. So for example, you can set a rule based on whether a checkbox is or is not selected. And this is not possible with radio buttons. You cannot say, hey, display this text field if this trader button is not selected, that's not possible. But you can do it with checkboxes. I can say that if this checkbox is not checked, then I want this field to pop up and be required. So checkboxes have been lifesavers when setting up complex logic in the templates that we are building for our clients. And by the way, I've released a video on conditional logic super recently. So if you're interested in learning how this works, it's also linked in the bio. And once your radio buttons and checkboxes have been correctly set up, don't forget to rename the label. Why am I talking so much about labels? Because if you set up your labels with meaningful names, you can automatically retrieve the options that your signers have selected in the forms directly inside of your business tool without having to do any manual copy paste. How does that work? Well, as soon as a recipient signs the document, DocuSign then extracts the data, so which option was selected, and will then send that checkbox inside of your database or spreadsheet or CRM. You might be using Google Sheets and Excel a spreadsheet or your CRM or an ERP. It does not matter. But this means that you, as the sender of the document, don't have to do any data entry to extract whatever was provided in the forms by your signers and store it and reuse it for your business. And that's why I keep saying in all the videos, give a meaningful name to your labels because otherwise you cannot integrate DocuSign with your other business apps. So as you can see here, I'm just looking at a quick database that I've put together for this example. And so the information that was entered in DocuSign lands automatically inside of my database. So I could be reusing that information 
for any other purpose to run the business. And so if you'd like our assistance to automate your workflow, you can schedule a strategy session with one of our automation consultants using the link just down below. Our services include template, databases, and integration development to help you automate all your forms and your paperwork. In the next video, I'll explain how to use drop-down fields in a way that will save your signers and yourself, the sender of the document, even more time. I will see you then. Ciao.